Hi folks, I'm Matt, and it's time for a ZOMBIES REVIEW! YEAH! <laughs> Alright folks, finally today, we're going to be going over ZOMBIES 14 SPACE BITES, THE FINAL FRONTIER. This was my most anticipated game of 2015. It barely came out in 2015. came out the 1st of December. I had already left on a business trip and did not arrive till Christmas week to open it. I didn't get to play it till after Christmas, and now that I've played it a couple of times, I feel safe that I can give you this review. So let's go over the board and what it looks like and how the gameplay goes. Uh, first off, it's a pre-setup board, as you can see here. Uh, the tiles... The corner tiles that you see here should be on each edge. There are four cargo bays. I'm trying to point to them there, there, and there. Uh, we'll go on those edges. Other than that, though, these other places in between, the other places in between, both the cargo bases, those can be uh, arranged however you want. They're all the same. As you see, it makes just one internal space station that you have there. Now, the dice that you see in the middle of it, I'll get to those in a minute, what they signify. But as you see, as the setup goes, your men are on a space dock, and they'll be at any cargo. I just put them here, but all your players will start at one of these cargo places to start off the game. And as you see, through any area that's not a cargo space or a corner, there are three zombies placed in the corridors. Now, that's very important. I'll get to that in another minute as well. Uh, another thing about the setup, each room, they don't tell you what's in there, hearts and bullets, but they tell you in the rule book, two bullets and one heart for each one. So that's what you'll have. So the importance about there being three zombies in the corridors. Uh, if at any time on the board, if there is not at least one corridor that doesn't have three zombies in it, not counting corners or cargo bays, then you have to reset putting three zombies on each square that requires zombies. So, for instance, let's say there were none here, none here, two there, two there, one, one there, and three there, and none there. Well, if someone on their next turn moved the zombie off there, well, there would be finally one corridor without three zombies on it. Everything resets. You put three zombies if you can, like this one would only get one, but you would replenish the board. So zombies do respawn that way on such a short board. That's how they get more zombies in the game. Uh, when it comes to combat, something a little bit new. Uh, combat, first off, four, five, or six kills the zombie. But you can uh, they also let you battle zombies one or two spaces ahead with, without, well, without a serious penalty on yourself. So if I, my movement ended here and I wanted to kill one more, uh, I could roll a, with a thing of a minus one, I could roll a five or six and kill that one, or a six and kill that one. Now, I can use hearts and bullets if I really want to kill them. But uh, they have weapons that can do this without the penalty. So I'm not sure why they let you do that, and I'll explain why this, that makes no sense in a minute. But every time you battle a zombie and you fail, and you either have to pay a bullet or a heart, this die is set to six. All the die are set to six. And this die will go down to five, because there was a miss in there. And four, and then three. Well, there's three. Once it gets to three, though, the pressure in this corridor drops, and it's hard to kill zombies. So now you have a negative one as you fight zombies in this corridor, if it's three or more. If it gets down to two or one, after one, and it goes to zero, uh-oh, this is ejected. <laughs> From the game, you'll flip it over. You'll flip over the card. You cannot access that corridor anymore, and that person will die who failed to roll. So you get evacuated out to space. You get to be respawned once the shuttle arrives. What shuttle, you're saying, Matt? I don't see a shuttle here. I don't either. All I see is this middle die here. This represents the shuttle. So at the start of your turn, you have three other cargo bays this shuttle can go to. And you just assign them numbers. So this one would be one and two. If I rolled a three and four, the shell's going there. If I roll a five and six, it's going there. Let's see where it's going. It's going to five and six. So there you go. So there's where our ship is. Our goal is to get to that ship. Now, what we do is we place this die to a, a two. That means we have two rounds to make it there. So I have two rounds to make it all the way up in there and land in that before that second round is over. After the first round, you flip it to one. After that last round, if no one's on it, 
you re-roll again. Again, let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And I rolled a three, so it would be over here. And then I'd mesh it to two in, on the next two turns. The shuttle would move again. The game ends when one or more players make it to the shuttle as it leaves. So for instance, you see where it's a two? What if I just got lucky I was right here and the shuttle was here? Well, I could hop right on it, but I don't win the game yet because I got to give everyone another turn and then one final turn until the shuttle leaves. So you can have multiple winners uh, in this game. So reviewing some of the cards, the first one here is no one can hear you scream. It says this shuttle does not dock. If it is already docked, it leaves immediately. So if you had the shuttle docked here, it doesn't dock. You can say, uh-uh, the shuttle, the shuttle leaves and you can re-roll the shuttle and move it somewhere else. So if someone's close to it, you can kind of screw them over that way. Uh, next up is Phaser. It says, play this card in front of you. You may create uh, combat zombies on adjacent squares, discard on a roll of one. So this is the one that you can uh, take them one ahead without that minus one penalty. So just let you fight one more ahead of them. Uh, get the jump on some zombies. This next one is Human Error. It says, roll the gravity die. And by the way, these on the corner here, these are gravity die. And you can pick three tiles, re-roll the gravity tie, and re-roll any rolls of one. So if you have gravity ties, you know, a lot of combats happen on it, maybe it's at a three, you can have a chance to re-roll it and see if you can get to, oh, look at that, I got to six. And so you basically restored life support there, and you made it easier to kill zombies again. So that's something to help you out before any corridors close. Next one is Noisy Cricket. This is a very popular one. Uh, for my group. It says, play this card in front of you. Once per turn, add two plus to combat for any adjacent zombie that is one or two squares away. Move your pawn in the opposite direction, two squares. So if I killed a zombie, I move two squares away from it. People love this because it also gives them two bonus moves. They'll shoot a zombie behind them and move two up closer to the cargo bay. Next one is phone home. It says, shuttle arrives this turn. What does that mean? Um, the shuttle that is on a two or whatever, it uh, will you will automatically re-roll at the end of this turn. You won't wait two turns. This one just forces it at the end of this turn, we're gonna roll it again. So you automatically turn it to one, so even if, even if it just docked. So it's gonna move again. Uh, live long and prosper, of course, a Star Trek reference. All players gain one heart and target players movement is increased by three for this turn. So that's nice, you, you get three bonus moves. This one to boldly go. All players double their movement until the beginning of your next turn. So you get two double movements there. So that's uh, moving fast is always fun. Space suit. Play this card in front of you. You gain two hearts. If you lose the space suit, discard the two hearts. So basically we play it like uh, the shotgun card from the original set. We put two hearts on here and if you lose both of them, if you use both of them, you lose your space suit. He's dead, Jim. It says target player has one heart token. Uh, that player discards a heart token and all penalties apply, meaning you killed them. <laughs> this is a card that kills other players. And by the way, if a player dies in this game, they have to wait till the shuttle moves again and they respawn back in that cargo bay of where the shuttle just left. So it puts them at a disadvantage. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. It says cancel any player's movement or card or combat roll, your choice. So that's kind of neat. Uh, uh, you can cancel their movement or their combat or just their card. So it's a little bit all-encompassing all all cancel card. Kind of neat. Copy that. It says play this card in front of you, discard, and copy the effects of any card just played and use the copied effects immediately. So you get those effects there too. All right, Thermal Detonator. Of course, this one's from Star Wars. It says play this card in front of you, discard to kill all zombies on one tile. The gravity of the life support die, if present, is changed to three for that tile. So if you throw a thermal detonator in there, it's a five, it automatically goes down to three because you hurt the atmosphere in there. And of course, I think you would with a thermal detonator. Look out. Uh, do or do not, there is no try. I, I don't know why they have a Star Wars reference here and not a Star Wars-like picture. This is an astronaut in there. That's kind of confusing to me. It says, target player may not spend any bullets this turn. Oh, that sucks. This one is from... Uh, the old uh, WB cartoons, Warner Brothers cartoons, uh, the Space Modulator from Marvin the Martian. Uh, it says, play it in front of you once per turn, kill two adjacent, uh, adjacent zombies on a successful combat roll. Uh, I actually really like this card. It's kind of fun. And then finally, it's the cover card uh, that you see on the cover of the box. Houston, we have a problem. The player to your right and left lose their next turn. In a two-player game, the other player just loses their turn. So it forces two players 
right around you to lose their turn. So you can actually get the jump ahead of them. All right, so final thoughts. What do I think about this game? As you know, I love Zombies. Zombies was my gateway game. I've been playing it for years, and I intend to play it for years more. In fact, it's still the most popular game that we bring out to the table during gaming nights. So, when 14 came out, super excited, opened the box, played it with my friends, and 10 minutes later, when the game was over, we had a lot of negative things to say. Uh, the game is way too short, 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, maybe if you like short games, this is the one for you. In fact, we do intend to use it if, you know, we've been playing other games and we want to play a little bit of Zombies, but we don't, don't want to take an hour to play it. We'll bring out Zombies 14, we said. Um, but that's because we love Zombies. And here's the thing, I would never show this game to someone just getting into Zombies. This is a horribly put together game. In fact, it's so bad I, I almost want to believe it's like a test game. You know, something that someone gave you to just to test out and play. It's not fully completed. It doesn't feel like a completed game. Some of those cards are broken that I showed you. The double movement. So the game goes two rounds and the, it's over. It, you don't get to enjoy all the cards. You don't get to kill that many zombies. You're just running around in circles. I mean, yeah, the, where the gravity shuts down, that's nice. But why use die? Why use cheap dice? to represent that. I mean, this game is super cheap. It's cheaply made. It's got just some regular tiles. Why not make special tiles that have a dial on them and you get to dial down the atmosphere, right? And that's cracking at three, two, one. Maybe it's in red. And then when you do it to zero, it goes black and you, you just flip it over, you know, because it's dead. Why can't they do something nice like that? Why is the shuttle a die? Like, I, had, I was so confused when reading it because that shuttle die. Well, where's the shuttle? It is the die. And then you have to put a 2 and a 1 on it after you do it. You have to roll to see. I don't mind rolling to see where it goes next. That's fine. But using the die as the shuttle, couldn't you just afford to put a little shuttle? Give us something nice. Give us a little shuttle. We can put a few men on there. That would be fun. Maybe even have a little clicker there. It has 1, 2, and then it moves. You know, you click, flip it over one way, then 1, then it moves, then it goes back, flips back to 2. It's very simple. It'd be very cheap to do that, but you didn't even do that. You gave a six crappy die. I mean, I, I just, and you know, I, I, I love Carrie. I love Jonathan. I talk to him uh, every once in a while. I think they're great people. This is a lazy game. It's a broken game. There's so many ways to end this game very quickly. What if I'm playing with three players, okay? And I, and I skip both their turns. Well, it, I can basically, you know, after the first turn, I'm getting close to the shuttle. And so that's one round. The last round comes and I throw them both under the bus because I skipped them. And now I'm going to play another card on my new turn because remember, I get to play another card on my next turn. And it is the double movement or the plus three in movement. And I could probably get to the shuttle and end the game immediately. There's a million ways in this game in under five minutes. And I just don't like that. Why get a game it's, it's not going to play that long? I mean, this is a game, it just, the bar was raised for me on this, and I love zombies. I love zombies. But it seems to me that Twilight Creations is getting lazy with it. And I hate, I hate, I hate that I have to uh, put this game down so much. Because uh, honestly, I love zombies. We're going to play it. We decided it was okay. We, we enjoyed some of the cards. Some of the cards are really cool. Um, some of the cards didn't make sense. Like the whole rule about you can kill one in front of you or two in front of you, but remember if you fail, that's going to hurt the gravity. Okay, what's the point of killing zombies then? Killing zombies just to get them out of your way? Yeah, that's the only reason. But you don't win with 25 zombie kills. You have to get to it. Plus, and this is just nitpicking here, the story sucks. It says if you want to combine this with the main game, what you do is you pretend the helipad is a launch pad because you have to leave Earth. You're leaving Earth because the zombies have taken over Earth. You go to the space station and now your job is to get off the space station and get back on the shuttle that you just left. So when you got off in the cargo bay and turned down the first quarter and saw the zombies went, oh, time to leave. But the shuttle left. Who's driving the shuttle? Why is it moving around? I don't know. I just, I know, you know, story like that. That's nitpicking there. But Honestly, it just doesn't make sense. Now, for Zombageddon, someone came up with a good idea of what we could do with it, and we may work it with uh, Martians. Uh, but other than that, I, I just don't get it. Um, a lot of things. I, the preset board. There's not going to be much movement. You're just going to always go around in a square. It's going to be the same actions 
the same cards. There's not going to be that much versatility. There's no checks and balances. Plus, the die, it's killing me. It's ki it looks so ugly. It looks like someone brought out their demo game and said, here, what do you think about this? This could be a great game. You should, here's what you can make it. Oh, yes, this is, this is not going to be die. It's not going to be this. Oh, yeah, we're going to perfect. They didn't even test play this game, obviously. I don't, I don't see how they could have test played it. Because if there's so many cards that you can win the game immediately. It took us, I want to say it took us like 10 or 15 minutes to play the first round. And I've never had a game last more than 15 minutes. Like I said, we, we enjoy it. Should you get it? No. I think you should get every other expansion before this one. If you have every other expansion, then yeah, go ahead and get it. Because that obviously means you love zombies and you will accept this one as well. Because like I said, the cards are okay and a quick game is kind of fun. But overall, the mechanics, just horrible. It's laziness. And see, that's what I don't like. I don't like laziness. I don't know what's going on with Twilight Creations because I really, really, I really love them. I really love them. Humans 4, blah, it was same old, same old. The brains. And Carrie didn't even know why. She said, hey, why not? Why not just put brains in? Well, put a reason behind it. Don't just print stuff out. I already talked about them putting out a PG-13 rating of the game of zombies, not as violent, with not as violent art. Why? Because you did a Zombies Junior that is specifically for kids, and it's the same gameplay as Zombies. The same gameplay, except everything's cartoony. Then if you're going to do that, why do the PG-13 one? Why didn't you just go ahead and just put Martians to the reprinter? Because everyone wants Martians. I mean, I already have it. I got it when it first came out, but people are still looking for that game, and it's not in print. They say, oh yeah, we're going to reprint it next year. That was 2015. And they didn't do it. They did Zombies PG-13. What? Do Martians. They kept saying, hey, we're going to bring out Martians 2 this spring. That was 2015. 2016, the spring, we still don't know where Martians 2 is. And at this rate, I'm afraid of what it's going to look like. Flag, your flagship game is Zombies. You really need to make sure this one hits. Because right now, when they announce Zombies 15, I guarantee you, by the way, folks, Zombies 15 will not come out in 2016. They're usually good about getting one out a year, but they've delayed and delayed and delayed, and this year they're not going to make it. I know they're not going to make it. To do something like this and to bring it out and call it Zombies, Zombies fans are going to get it, but no one else is. And if people played this one, because it looks cool, Zombies in Space, yeah! And you're thinking, that's it? You just got to get to the shuttle? That's it. Nothing else. Doesn't even matter if you kill zombies or not. That's just laziness. I can't tolerate that. Anyway, I hate to be a downer on this game. But again, get every other expansion but this one. Save this one for last. If you still love zombies, then get this expansion. Because like I said, it will come to our table a couple of times. And I, I'm, I guarantee you it's going to get played uh, in the next week or so. Uh, because we, we've been wanting to play it again. Just because we kind of like the cards and it's something different. We, we, we still love zombies. All right, gamers, that's all for now. Till next time, game on!